Welcome back. Firstly, an apology. I was expecting to get this part uploaded within about four or five days of part one, but I thought it was a good opportunity while we're all locked up to get some work done. But something which I, I, I should have realized, and that is everybody's locked up virtually everywhere in the world. The effect of this is all the parts that I've ordered from China haven't arrived. Well, that in itself is not a bad thing because I've made a few mistakes. Firstly, I've decided to use a completely different chassis to the one that I showed in part one. The basic idea of the preamp is still going to be the same, but because of my total lack of metalworking um, experience, now that's not, that's not quite true. The biggest problem is because I'm retired, um, I don't have the equipment that I used to have. And when I was thinking of um, making holes rather than just the standard drill holes. It was easy because I had chassis punches and all sorts of things and, and cutting a hole out in a, in a big piece of aluminium or aluminium if you prefer was easy. But when all you've got now is a handheld electric drill and to be honest I've made a real mess of the chassis. Now I've shown you this in the last video and whilst it's not the ultimate in quality the holes for the valve holder bases are at least square and it looks fairly good but this is where the goodness finishes. Now this is the back panel as it was going to be and the first real mess was the socket here. It was meant to be a click in type. In other words, you push it through the aluminium and it clicks into position. But because the panel is so thick, this didn't happen. So I've had to glue it. I've used araldite to hold it in place. Now, whilst that's technically OK, it just looks a mess and I'm ashamed of it. Now, here I'm showing you the best parts first is the layout but let me flip it over now and show you the back of it i'm basically ashamed of this and i wouldn't recommend <laughs> i don't know why i'm showing you showing you this because if it was a good video i'd have edited this out and all you'd see was the marvelous um piece that's mess uh, that, that, that i would have made but let's look at it from the start. Uh, this side looks OK. This side, I have not made a very good job of centralising the holes on there, and it really looks a mess. And uh, the same here. Now, the biggest problem is when you use phonos of this type, you have to have clearance around the edge because that outer um, outer area is ground but you don't want it ground to the um, aluminium you want to be able to ground it to a, a star earthing point somewhere else in the circuitry um, so to clear the phono when you put it on there um, I've had to make a hole somewhat bigger than the drills that I've had and that involves filing and uh, this side is the same thing applies and here I had to make a square hole um, and I, I'm just not happy with it and here is the biggest mistake of all I've marked out the panel in reverse now that was supposed to be a din five pin din which was going to be the audio out but Oh, I can't show it to you from that way because it doesn't look right. But basically that should be here. But you can see the PCB is in the way. Basically, I'm ashamed of, of the lack of quality. 
I, I'm sure it will be electrically OK, but um, the idea of putting in a decent chassis is that um, it's going to look reasonable and clearly it doesn't. It is basically the heart of the project and I've chosen this particular module for a number of reasons. It uses the 5532, which I've done videos on before. The reason for using it rather than some of the smaller ones I've shown you before is because this has its own power supply built in. In other words, you feed AC into this socket here and um, these are just the input and outputs. And it has its own integral volume control. More of that later. Now, the reason I've decided to feed the various modules with AC is simply because as there's going to be three or four different modules on this project, all of them require different voltages and current. Now, I could have a basic 12 naught 12 DC and feed that to each of the modules separately. But they would all need to be basically decoupled from each other. And it, I, I just think it's going to be problematic. It's easier to feed AC to each module and let it do its own rectification and its own stabilization. Most of what you see here is the power supply. So everything to the left of this chip is power supply. The power comes in here, AC, not AC. And there's a bridge rectifier down here. And these are the main smoothing capacitors. And I think from memory, they're 3,300 at a suitable voltage. And from there, they go to these 15 volt, is it 15 or 12? Yes, these regulators are 12 volts. So you've got a, a plus one here and a minus one there or vice versa. Now looking at the rest of the circuit, there isn't really much to tell you about it. You One chip is used for each channel and there are two separate amplifiers in each one. Now I haven't tested this yet, but I've got no reason at this stage to think they will not be fine because these chips, providing you put the right voltages on and set the feedback to give you the gain you require and it's decoupled, which it is with these capacitors um, and along with these here, it will work because the chip has its own parameters and providing you feed it with the correct voltages and uh, feedback it will give well perfect results basically now the only negative thing on here is the potentiometer i don't know how accurate or how bad or how good it's going to be but um it doesn't feel that good it's quite stiff to turn but saying that i'm going to test it and if it's okay i will leave it i'll check the matching of it and take it take it from it's a 50k log pot which is the correct value to what i would have put in myself so we shall see now this will mount on the new front panel i'll show you the new chassis which I have ordered which sadly hasn't arrived yet but hopefully it's not going to be months it's already been four weeks and uh, well this took six weeks to get here so uh, all going well I expect to see that rather soon I thought I'd show you the back of the PCB for no other reason than to show you that it's been nicely assembled. To the best of my knowledge, this isn't available as a kit. So um, I always worry about the soldering on some of these things. But this, as you can see, is nicely soldered. This is the first test lash up of the input module. 
And we have here the rat trap, which is going to supply power to the 12 naught 12 transformer, which connects in here. And we have a bodge socket here and a bodge socket here. This is input and that cable goes on to the output of my PC. And this output here goes to the amplifier, which is my amplifier that you've seen many times. Now this is just an earth lead to see if I need it, because at the moment it's unearthed. Right, we're about to apply power. The amplifier is on and the volume is at about nine o'clock. So we power up. No nasty noises. Now, here's something that I've found. Now, I don't know whether you'll be able to hear this. I'll put the gain on the amplifier on full. But when I touch the volume pot, I'm getting radio stations. And I think it's because the board isn't earth. So we'll test this now. This is my earth connection. And I'll put my finger on it and earth it. If I can get hold of it. Silent. So clearly the body of the pot isn't earthed. Now it may be like an earth, a centre tap here. No, it's actually the pot itself needs to be earthed. So we'll clip that on there. And it's now silent. And I have to say, I've got a slight hum, but that's because of these cables. These um, phono cables are crappy Chinese ones where they haven't used an earth lead. They've just, well, they haven't used a screened earth lead. And if I move them around, the slight buzz disappears but that's an insane amount of gain that's with the pot here on full and the volume pot on the amplifier on full which is not a condition you'd ever use it on so if we turn it down to a respectable level it's absolutely silent so let's have a bit of um, YouTube uh, to be fair not bad music and also the mic won't be in the right position to hear it in any quality, but it just shows you it's working. Whoops! <laughs> well, sorry if that blasted your ears off a bit, but that, that sounds good. Um, all that remains to do now is to do some more tests, which I won't do on camera because it will take place over m most of the day now to see whether on an AB test with it in and out of circuit, it has any color. I mentioned that the pot isn't earthed, but here, if I can point to it without getting the camera in the way, there's a little hole in the PCB and that is earth as opposed to this, which is not. So we're going to have to put a wire link from there to the metalwork of the pot. I've just tacked that earth wire on there. And then afterwards I thought that's possibly not the right thing to do because at the moment for testing, it needs to be there. But when this is connected to the front panel and screwed in, this will of course be earthed so the problem could actually cause an earth loop. So if you do this while testing, I would suggest you remove it before you mount it onto the front panel or you could have a problem. This is the new case that I've purchased and as yet hasn't arrived. You can see it's available in two types, black and silver. Now I've used the silver purely because it will match the amplifier I've previously 
builds. This is an internal view of it, although clearly I won't have these items in it. The, the case is purely as you see it there. This page shows the sizes and the details of what's included. Interesting spelling of knob, <laughs> power switch, rubber feet, power socket and screws. So nothing else is included in the case. A quick look now at the input board that I've discussed briefly in this video and also previously in the first video. These are the replacement RCAs or phonos as we prefer to call them in the UK. Um, I've used these before on my amplifier and they're nice because they are isolated from the chassis by those washers there. Look now on the preamp board which has been the main point of discussion on this particular video. You can see on there quite plainly the only differences are it says on there 2018 musical fidelity. Mine doesn't say that at all. Whether they've decided that it could be copyright or what, I don't know. And they describe it as a volume tone control board, which it clearly is not. There are no tone controls or facilities on it. So ignore that. It's just basically what I've described so far. Just out of interest, by the way, when you first turn this on, it draws 35 milliamps from each rail and that very quickly drops back to 17 to 18 millivolts. So a very low power consumption. An interesting thing that I have just spotted is here it states the board has a 7815 and a 7915 as the regulator chips. Well, it doesn't. It has 7812 and 7912, which of course are the are 12 volt versions. Um, not quite sure why that would be, because the, the 5532s which are the preamp chips are capable of running at plus or minus 15 volts. And the 7812 and that would in fact give you a better headroom. You could replace those with 15 volt regulators as it says on there, but you would probably have to increase your AC input, but that would mess up the rest of the circuitry that we're, we'll be dealing with. So I should check up on the overload characteristics to make sure, but from experience with these chips, the, you, the it, it will give output of five, six volts or more. So I, you're not going to need that because any amplifier is going to need about one volt, probably maximum input. So I don't think that's going to be an issue. But just interesting though that they claim that's what they've got and they haven't.